This is 1,000 pounds of concrete, and it's being held up by plastic. Not super plastic, not aerospace plastic, just basic, inexpensive plastic that anyone can print at home, even on a beginner 3D printer. Today, we're comparing three of the most common 3D printing materials, PLA, PETG, and carbon fiber PETG. And instead of a wimpy little tensile bar print in a pseudo lab, we're using an actual outdoor tug of war setup between a truck and a tractor to see how these filaments behave in the real world. This whole idea started when I took a simple 3D print outside and I hooked it up to a 1,000 pound block of concrete. I expected the print to snap instantly the moment the tractor started to lift, but it didn't. It just picked it up. In fact, I even stood on it and it kind of blew my mind. I was using a 2,000 pound scale, had the cameras all set up and was ready to watch the prints explode, but instead it maxed out my scale. And some of these materials actually broke my scale. 400 kilograms. Four hundred kilograms. So I had to order a new scale, a much bigger one, and start over to measure the actual results. Man, I don't know. And now, what am I supposed to do? This is this is a PTGCF. I mean, that's going to be like way stronger. Ugh. So that sent me down this whole other path. How strong are these basic materials, really? We printed all three materials using the same model, a simple toe ring designed by Maker Mammal in our community. It's about four inches wide, six inches long, and three quarters of an inch thick. All three prints used identical settings, eight walls, 50% grid infill, and three bottom layers with five top layers. Yes, the bottom layer count should have probably been five to match the top, but I accidentally forgot on the first one, so I just kept it consistent across all three. We set up a straightforward outdoor test. The tractor slowly pulls against the truck, the scale measures peak load, and eventually the printed part will fail. Now, we'll try not to have any shock loads. I mean, we are pulling with vehicles, so it could happen, but just steady tension until something gives is what we're looking for. This lets us see how each filament behaves in bending, compression, tension, and shear, the kinds of forces they'd face in real world use. We're using all Polymaker filaments in this test. That keeps things consistent, so the only difference is the material itself. The PLA is their basic polylite PLA formula, the PTG is actually their newly released formula, and the PTG with recycled carbon fiber is from their Fibron line. All right, first up is PTG, and honestly, I expected more from this one. PTG is usually that middle ground filament. It's flexible, durable, great for outdoor parts. PTG is ductile. It, it's more flexible than uh, quite a few other filaments. It's stronger in some real world scenarios and it handles UV and heat really well. But because it's ductile, it tends to deform under stress instead of resisting it. I had Van slowly pull with the tractor. The load climbed 200 kilograms, then three, then four, and then it peaked out at about 461 before settling in around 455 kilograms, and that's when it finally gave up. And when it failed, it didn't just crack a little, it absolutely exploded. Pieces went everywhere. It was a beautiful, catastrophic failure, but definitely lower than I thought that PTG would actually go. And I know, I'm sorry, I really need to get myself a high-speed camera, right? These shots would look sick in super slow motion. Next up is the carbon fiber PTG. This is the one that I expected to be the strongest. PTG with chopped carbon fiber added in, it's much stiffer, it holds its shape under load, and it's usually the go-to material for functional outdoor parts. And the moment the truck and tractor started pulling against each other, you could feel the difference. That load climbed past 800, 900, past 1,000 kilograms, and finally, it failed at 1,132 kilograms. Like, that is insane. That's what, close to like 2,500 pounds. Now that failure, it may not look impressive on camera, but there was a lot of energy there. And when it went, it seriously went. I found pieces of the tow ring almost 30 feet away across the gravel yard, and some of it just dropped straight down below the rig. Last up is PLA, and honestly, this was the one I expected to fail first. All right, so we have to do it differently. The tractor is actually pulling the truck. So now we've got someone in the truck and we're doing an active little tug of war here. Here it goes. Okay, 50, 100, that's in kilograms. 250, four, five, 
PLA is the most widely used 3D printing material on Earth. It's cheap, it's strong, but it's brittle, and it shouldn't be anywhere near a carbon fiber material in a real tug of war. But when the tractor started pulling, that load went up fast, 700, 800, 900, 1,000 kilograms, and the PLA kept holding. It passed PTG, it passed PTGCF, and it didn't fail until 1,148 kilograms. At one point, the tractor was physically dragging my 11,000 pound truck, and the PLA still hadn't failed. When it finally did break, it exploded with so much force that pieces shot off in every direction. I am telling you, this absolutely blew my mind. This was the last result that I expected, especially from PLA. Based on everything that we know about these materials, carbon fiber PTG should have been the strongest. If you look at Polymaker's own data, PTG, recycled carbon fiber, has the highest tensile strength of the group in a standardized ISO 527 tensile test. PLA and PTG sit right behind it with very similar numbers. So on paper, PLA is strong, but brittle. PTG is ductile, but slightly weaker, and PTGCF should have been the clear winner in a strength test. But that is not what happened out here. PTG failed early, far earlier than I expected. PLA didn't just beat PTG, it held more than double the force that PTG did. That alone blew my expectations apart. But the real twist was the comparison between PLA and PTGCF. PLA didn't just tie with the carbon fiber material, PLA actually beat it. Not by a huge amount, but PLA still came out on top. And PLA should never be the winning filament in a test like this. Polymaker's chart shows exactly what should happen in a straight line tensile test. PETGCF has the highest tensile strength. PLA and PTG are just below it, but our test isn't a tensile bar. This tow ring sees a mix of tension, bending, compression, and shear, especially where the shackles squeeze the print. Under that kind of loading, stiffness matters more than ultimate tensile strength. As the load rises, PTG starts to stretch and deform long before it reaches its maximum strength. Now, once it starts to neck or creep, it can't carry increasing load anymore, which is why it failed early. Now, PLA and PTGCF are much stiffer materials. PLA resists bending far more than PTG, and in this specific geometry and temperature, that stiffness allowed PLA to carry a higher peak load before its brittle failure. Now that carbon fiber PTG is also stiff, but in this test, PLA simply handled the load path slightly better. And that's how PLA ended up outperforming both PTG and the PTG with carbon fiber. Now, this doesn't mean that PLA replaces PTGCF for functional parts. PLA is still a very brittle material, and it still performs poorly in heat. It'll just deform on a hot day. But in this specific shape, under combined loading, PLA came out on top, and that's the part that shocked me the most. And if you want to see us put more of these materials through real-world punishment like this, tell me in the comments below. We have PLA Pro, ABS Nylon, and so many more. We can line them all up and see what survives. And a huge thank you to all of my YouTube members and Patreon supporters who have helped make bigger tests like this possible. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Oh, and YouTube, it wants you to go watch this video right up here. It's a good one. Go watch it.